honest, you know, I mean, it, it's going to, whether you take somebody out and it collects you and, and you go with them, that's your fault, one and done. Um, I, I, I understand. I don't agree with it, but I understand it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Warren's not, he's not impressed with it. You know? <laughs> I get it too. I, yeah, I don't like the rule. I I don't either. I don't think any real racer does. I, I think it's a, a thing for, Because you know, things do happen on the track. Exactly. exactly. And, and it can be observed by somebody in a flag stand or a track worker or whatever. Race director. As, as a blatant move. And it can actually be incidental in in reality. You know, I mean, it's, right. it's a judgment thing. It is. And, and Willamette has... And all the racetracks do. They have workers around the track that they could go to, and maybe they should, but it has to be somebody that wants to take that responsibility and not be afraid to piss off the drivers, not be biased to anybody, you know, and and just make good, honest calls. Right. And, and, you know, you can only try so hard. It's just, it's impossible to do perfect. You're going to, exactly. You're going to get calls wrong. Someone's going to get upset. And and that's, you know, we're all human. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing too is you know we all we about, can do is try exactly we we talk about Willamette Speedway and you've got Jeremy Means in the in the flag stand you've got Rick over in turn, turn three. three and he's watching backstretch in turn three and then what a lot of people don't realize is safety that, crew well you have the safety crew on the inside but you also had Chris Knopfinger sitting over in turn two mm-hmm. usually yeah and Chris was quiet Rick <clears throat> on, he was quiet Jeremy Jeremy you know and that's the thing is. People around the track, and that's what a lot of people don't realize, is that it's not always Jeremy at Willamette making the call. He's getting right. information, well, right. or you right. know, because in real reality, Chris was the track manager. Mm-hmm. He's the event, the race director. He can overrule anything Jeremy and says. And there were some times that, that that did happen. There was, and there were some times that it didn't happen. Um, you know, again, I think it's uh, it's a matter of perspective, perspective in the situation. And, and we've talked about this how many times on this right. show? And, and it's going right. to be at every single track across the nation. You know, it it's is just, it just is. the way it is, and it we don't have to accept it. There should be ways to make it better. Right. Exactly. But for the time being, I guess all we can do is is go with the program. You know, whatever the rules are. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> right. You know it. Everybody likes to see change, but if you get people out there in in the different spots around the track to make those calls, then to the owner that's more payroll. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going to have to. You know, it's just it just. There's a lot of reasons they don't. There's right. a lot of reasons. You know. So, and, and this is something else you can do. And, and some tracks are starting to do this, and I've actually seen this in action at banks. Um, when I was a kid. I actually got invited to go down to to Medford in 89, was it 89? Yeah, 89. I think it was 89 uh, four-stroke Grand Nationals were at Medford. I want to say 89. It might have been 88. It was a long Mm -hmm. time ago. I got invited to go down to help flag the event. Uh Now, that's a a three-quarter mile, 17-turn road course, and it's a fast track. They said, Here's the corner you're going to be working. <laughs> I went, uh, wait a second here. Um, I don't have a lot of experience doing this, and you're going to put me on that corner. It was a corner where they come out of a tight little chicane, short little straightaway, and come around a sweeper into my corner where all the action seemed to happen. And when something did happen, we all had radios, and they'd say, all right, Corey, what would you see? Whose fault was it? <laughs> Whoa. I mean, that's putting <laughs> – I understand. It's a lot of pressure. It, it is. The responsibility is on the person that works that corner. But all you have to do is say what you've seen. This is what I saw. I saw the X car drive in hard and hit the B car and turn him around. Um, I'd say it was the X car's fault. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you, you talk about getting thrown into the mix like that. Remember my first night on Extreme? Oh, man. We, we both had experiences like this. Yes. Yeah. What do we got coming in, coming in on the Swift Anthony Trucking Bentley Challenge? just says, you know, you guys are right. Do the best you can. People are human. Do the best you can making the calls. There's going to be there's going to be mistakes. And we're not saying that, you know, you have to be perfect. You're not going to be. I think in this case, though, the one and done rule, I, I think, especially at big races, when you got a lot on the line, needs to go away. My opinion, I don't like it. Yeah. And I think that there needs to be, if I want to word it with more accountability, to the to the officials to make a call instead of sending a guy to the back of the pack. That's the way I see it. Yeah, maybe it should be a, a different, a few different perspectives. You know, maybe maybe Jeremy could get on the radio and say, "Rick, what did you see? Chris, what did you see? 
it, and then make a make a. Well, and that's what I was alluding to when I said uh, I seen that in action at Banks. I actually listened on the radio one night, and Justin, we had an incident down in Turn Two. And Justin was watching a race that was going down the back stretch into Turn Three. It was actually a battle for the lead, and he was watching you know that particular part of the track because that's where the you know you're talking about the leaders, and he didn't see what happened you know just out of the apex of Turn Two. Listening to him on the radio, he said, "Hey." What did you guys see down there in turn two? Who saw that? What happened? He yeah. listened to what happened, made his decision, and I think it was the right one. Absolutely. That's, that's the way to do it. I think so. I think, think you've got to have way. people willing to, to input the, right. what they saw. Right. Exactly. You know, give me a radio. I'll tell you what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you do as the pit correspondent. You're always right. telling us, just for this the... is what I'm seeing back here over. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. But you it's good You to don't want to hear oh, what yeah. I say. <laughs> Oh, I've so heard you guys want to get like the NFL where you start uh, reviewing all these calls? No, no, I mean, no. Could get to that. I look at it as I've been listening to you guys, and I didn't see the incident you've been talking about. But to me, out there, the rule's the rule. Everybody you has to change it, it. Petition to change it. Change it the next year. Live with it as is. That's I, I don't opinion. disagree with that. I think you know. I, 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 agree. I agree with what you're saying. Because you can't, yep. you can't go you change can the rules week too. to week. I, I think when you go change rules week to week, like NASCAR, you start doing what NASCAR is doing and, and look at empty grandstands. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Warren, I know you're a diehard NASCAR guy. you got a lot of NASCAR you're in You're really background. starting to pee. I know. I know. <laughs> Dude, look at him. His, I'm, his, right, he's, I'm right there with I, you. This, this, is, this is a weekly thing with him and I. I I'm on him all the time about NASCAR. I think it is so boring. NASCAR has changed. And here's why I don't like NASCAR. It, it's one. It's one simple it's a, thing. It's amazing that you hate this NASCAR so bad, but it always is in conversation but, with well, you. <laughs> but, and it's because of one. I have one issue with NASCAR, and it's the same. Wait, wait, wait. One issue, and you hate NASCAR this yes, much? Yes, absolutely. Despise. If you say it's Tony Stewart, your no, problem solved. No. Yep. <laughs> oh, you know what? I love or Greg Tony Biffle. Stewart. I love yeah. Tony Stewart. Okay. Well, let's hear this. What's your one issue with NASCAR? This stupid playoff system they've got for points is absolutely ridiculous. There's no place for motor sports at any level. Get period. rid of it. I'll tell you right now. I'll say it on the air, and I'm going to make some people mad again. That's okay. Jimmy Johnson doesn't deserve a seventh title, doesn't deserve a sixth title, or even a fifth title because he didn't win them in a true race format. He didn't win them like Earnhardt and Petty did where you ran 36 races and scored the most points. You got this. You got this. Oh, God, you got this stupid <laughs> format where a guy can go out. Okay, so think about this. Oh, my, this. look at the time. No, think about this for a minute. You go out mm-hmm. and win 19 races. Let's just say something wild. You go out and win 19 races. You get your way into the end of the race, and you're eliminated in the first playoff process. It's just stupid. Earnhardt right now, if Earnhardt was alive, this wouldn't be happening. If Earnhardt was alive, he would be kicked out of the racing. He would. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot race under quit. his rules. But you know what I said? Screw you guys. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree with that. I don't like that format either. But again, everybody's playing by the same rules, right? So it is. It is what it is. Your tens going off or what? Yeah, it went off. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Oh, folks, this is funny. We need a, we need a, we need a live video feed. <laughs> It's like a jackrabbit oh. jumping around. Talk about Michael Jackson. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what so, here, here, Ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you can see this right now, oh. Corey is bright red. I just broke out of here. sweat. Do it again. I'll tell you right now, I think that's what an AKG did. The clear. <laughs> my lead came off. <laughs> it actually fell down the backside of my pants. <laughs> I'm awake. We better go to break. I think that's a good time to go to break. <laughs> we'll be right back, folks, at Northwest Dirt News here Lord, live I'll on tell you Spreaker what, I've had Radio. More fun. You'd be talking bad about Jimmy. Hey, Corey, you want to tell me what we're doing around all these cows? We're at Stumbling J Livestock, Joel. Did you know that Stumbling J Livestock has been a family owned business since 2005 and supplies all cattle needs from 300 pound feeders to 1,300 pound animals ready for butcher? No, I didn't know that. Did you know Stumbling J Livestock buys any type of livestock year-round and pays competitive prices? No, I didn't know that either, Corey. And I bet you didn't know Stumbling J Livestock buys and sells sheep and goats for pasture and meat. Uh, no, I had no idea. Joel, you don't know a whole bunch about cattle and livestock, do you? Well, honestly, Corey, not really. Well, Stumbling J Livestock provides all types of meat from silage-fed, grain-fed, even grass-fed. Yeah, really? Stumbling J sells butcher-ready hogs when available, too, Joel. 
I sure love me some bacon. My local butcher, they've got the best bacon. Those local butchers work directly with Stemlin' J Livestock, and Stemlin' J can butcher at a USDA plant to sell fresh meat straight off the farm. Hey, Corey, how do you know so much about Stumbling J and their livestock? Well, Joel, I read the script. Man, let's eat. I'm hungry. Oh, man, I just found a cow pie with my new boots. <laughs> yeah, I thought I smelled something. Don't worry, it'll wash off. Stumbling J Livestock Incorporated is located in Shed, Oregon. You can contact them at 541-409-5650. Okay, gosh dang it. Man, we, whew. I'm back. I'm alive. I am alive, boys. Um, geez, that was uh, a little hectic. <laughs> it was quite entertaining from my perspective. Uh, that was not. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I haven't seen somebody do the funky chicken like that since I saw cops when some dude got tased. It's, that's basically what was happening there. So I've got my tens unit on. For those that are listening at home that, that want to know what the heck just happened, I've got my tens unit on, and I've got it cranked up to about eight on ten. It's pushing out some power. The lead got caught on my chair popped off the right side of the pad on my back and fell down the back side of my pants and every time that sucker hit um, I felt it I felt it I was arcing out was ar- you were short circuited I was something oh lord I was it looked like oh. I looked like Rick Daniels didn't I the flagman at Cottage Grove yeah, except he's more graceful than you. Well, that there was no grace involved. Uh, I don't know, but it, the other three of us here, we're, we're all sitting here with our chins dropped down to like, what the heck is he doing? Is, is he okay? Do we need to call an ambulance? And then I'm sitting there and I see him, I, I see him start digging for his, for his lead. I'm going, oh, I've had that happen before. It yeah. hurts like a son of a gun. It, yeah, it does. It does hurt. So, back on track. Okay. Um, have, you guys, uh, have you guys spent much time on Facebook the last couple of days? Uh, I'm trying you know, to I'm trying to wean myself off of Facebook, I'm but I'm on a, there every day. I'm doing a pretty good job. I've cut way back, but now I haven't. <laughs> did Not you guys lie. Did you guys happen to see Did you happen to see the uh, you know the PRI the PRI shows going on back yep. in Indy? Are you seeing any posts come across there? I yes. saw that uh, Charlie and Bryson are on their way. They were they mid-air are. Uh, did this you, afternoon. Now, do you remember about a month ago? Clay, Charlie and Bryson James, by the way, right, Betty, right out there. Do you remember, guys, about a month ago when we just got back from Bakersfield and Clay Daly made a post talking about how the next build, talking about the next car he builds is the most important build of his life? Do you guys remember that? Uh-huh. Have you gone on his page and looked at the car he built and took to the PRI show? No. If you got a chance to bring it up real quick, Joel, I want you to take a look at this. This truly is one of the, if not the, nicest modified I have ever seen. This new Twisted Evo he's got going on. Is it his it is his. Well, it's it's a car he built. Now, I don't know who's the pilot or who bought this car. It's got the 96A on it. Um, <clears throat> thumb through there and take a look. You guys go on Facebook. Check it out. Go to Clay Daly's page. He's got the car posted at the PRI show. Beautiful, beautiful race car. And anybody that knows Clay, he's got a real passion for building these cars. And they're, they're, they're pieces of art to this guy. I mean, they truly are. It's It's a great race car. I'm excited to see what he does with this new... Twisted Evo design thing he's got going on. I mean, it's it's a great race car. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see some things on here I might want to try. Yeah. You know what I noticed right away? Look at that car at the show. Mm Mm-hmm. It reminds me of the 21 car. It was at the Jetstream Aqua Massage Massage, uh, race car show last year. Mm -hmm. You see the way that angle that car (laughs) sits? The first thing I thought of was how that 21 car sat last year. Oh, well, there's tricks to that. You know, and right. see, high quality builders, we know these tricks. Right, but he didn't use the same trick you guys did. Yeah, there's. We were just too lazy that to do the is other trick. A sweet ride, isn't that pretty, dude? The, and beautiful. the color scheme is amazing. I, that's what I really like. I really like that color it's scheme. It's simple. It's simple yet it's elegant. That that's that's I hate to say it, but that's the word. I mean, it truly is an elegant race car. It's it's like. And I'm not a fan of rap cars. Elegant appearing is probably badass. Well, that's if you look at the comments, I. Yeah, I we can't said, share these on the air. I kind of said something like that on the comments, and you're free to go on their page and read it. But um, yeah, great race car. You know, Clay's got some some things going on. Um, <clears throat> so real quick, awesome guy. I like jumping Clay. back to the last subject. I just got a just got on the Swears Trucking chat line a message from Jeremy. 
Uh, he says, believe me, most calls are discussed. I love the people who help me. My second, third, fourth set of 